12.45, restate my assumptions. 1. Mathematics is the language of nature. 2. Everything around us can be represented and understood through numbers. 3. If you graph the numbers of any system, patterns emerge. Therefore, there are patterns everywhere in nature. One of the things that philosophers do when they think about mathematics is they ask a very fundamental question. What is a number? What is a number? Do you know that hardly any professional mathematicians have ever asked the question, what is the number one? Seriously. So I said, now, students, I want you to tell me what the number one is, okay? Is this the number one right here? Some would say yes. Is this the number one? Is this the number one? And what I'm trying to get from these students is this, this answer. None of them, none of these things you've driven on, written on the board is, an, is the number one. They, what you've written are symbols. Reference for, R-E-F-E-R-E-N-T-S. Reference for the number one. And so then I went on and I said, do you know, students, that actually in any book that you might read, you'll never find the real number one? So suppose I give you some propositions that, that tell you what the real number one is. Why don't we begin by saying the number one is a concept. Ooh, that, you know, that impresses students. What is a concept? It's an idea. The number one is not found in this world. The number one is an idea. It ex okay, now where do ideas exist? Ideas can only exist in minds. If you're ever at a bus stop and somebody else at the bus stop is going around like this and you say, what are you doing? And he says, I'm trying to capture ideas. Walk away. Don't get on the bus with that guy. Ideas don't exist out here. They only exist in minds. Okay? Okay, kids. Now, another point. The number one, the number one is eternal. Now, I'm going to offer you an argument for this, kids, but I, I, would, I would say to my freshman students, but even, even if the argument doesn't persuade you, just humor me, all right? I mean, one thing you need to know about philosophers is we're weird people. If we weren't weird, we wouldn't be philosophers. Now, the number one has always existed. I mean, if it didn't always exist, when did it start existing? When did, it, when did the number one first exist? Now, some people might say, the day some primitive man first thought about it. Well, how did he know it was number one? Did he say, you know, I just had an idea, and I want to know if it's, and no one else has thought about it? How's he going to compare his idea, the number one, to anybody else? It's sort of like, well, the perfect circle has always existed. The Pythagorean theorem has always existed. No, Pythagoras thought it up. No, he didn't. He discovered it. There has always been a number one. And if it didn't always exist, when did it begin existing and what brought it into existence? Number four, the number one is immutable. What does that mean? It means the number one has never changed and the number one can never change. For one thing, if the number one could, exchange, could ever change, what would it change into? The number two? Then it would no longer be the number one. The number one must be forever unchanging because if it ever did change, it would no longer be the number one. Now, one other thing. The number one must exist independently of human minds. Why? Because no single human mind is eternal or immutable, nor is the collectivity of human minds eternal and immutable, because there was a time when no human minds existed. So if the number one is eternal, the number one must precede, it must antedate human mind. So, number six, there must exist an eternal and immutable mind. 
If the number one can only exist in a mind and the number one is eternal, then the mind in which the number one has always existed must be an eternal mind. And if the number one is immutable and it must exist in a mind, then the mind itself must be, that mind must be immutable 